This episode of Dear Jessamine has profanity, sex talk, weed smoking, and a bunch of other shit that is just not for everybody. And you also may not agree with the stuff we say or how we say it, and we think that's great. Today, we're recording from stolen Ohlone land. We promote cannabis medicine to people over 21, and if you're not 21, come back when you are. What I want to do to myself is selfish in the best way. Hey, I'm not even hey. going to put in the intro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just using that as the Good. That's right. Absolutely. Fruit snack forever. Hell yeah. Um, hey, Jessamine. Hey, Ash. How is it going? You know, it's going okay. Okay. It's it's been a mixed bag this morning, <laughs> frankly, from mm. 3 a.m. on. But oh, right. you know, at the end of the day, it was like the more the merrier. <laughs> um, we were uh, you know, why it's been life and we've been life and mm. I've been life and you've been life and I am quite glad to be back on this fucking stolen Ohlone land. Not that it's stolen. I'm glad to be back here in the Bay Area. Grateful to it to have made it back here which is interesting we the last time we were on here we were in north carolina and that is um, true. a lot has changed we uh hasn't made our way back out west oh just i that. mean like life has happened that's absolutely you, right i mean this is what's new in paradise and we literally said we weren't going to talk about what's new in paradise but you we parted ways for the journey back to california I flew back and you drove back. You went on a walkabout. It was definitely a drive. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, there were definitely parts of that drive that I did not care for, but you just got to keep driving. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which was what was Literally. so dank about it. I was just like kind of grumpy sometimes like, fuck this. And then I just had to keep doing it. Um what was that i mean like that's a challenge like aries challenge deep aries challenge you just have to keep going it doesn't matter totally yeah there are reserves in there i mean my body so i did a 21 hour drive day which is the longest drive day i've ever done in my whole life Mm. for sure i I hit 17 on this one cross-country road trip i was like oh 17 hours straight bitch but this without even meaning to. I woke up at five and I didn't go to sleep again until. But see, I would have gone to bed earlier, except I was about to run out of gas. So I had to go 35 miles in one direction with the trailer off. So I put the trailer on the side of the road, drove 35 miles to the next gas, got gas, came back, hooked up the trailer, went back again because I was stopping in a town. I wanted to make it to this place. So I got a hotel there and I didn't get to the hotel till like 5 a.m. You got there though. <laughs> but I got there and I took a shower and did a bunch of work with some internet and charged my phones and stuff. So How was yeah. the internet? It just fine. Hell yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. I exported, I uploaded. Hell yeah. Yep, yep. So, um, yeah, but I wouldn't, I don't need it again soon. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Yeah. That was quite a haul. What about for you? You were here in... Well, I had to get here first. Northern California. How'd that go? The decision to get here was very... uh, The decision to fly back here was based on a lot of different factors. uh, At least 50% of which were weenie space from one another. Mm. And... I did not want to literally up until being at the airport. Well, I couldn't tell how I felt about it. Yeah. It seemed like um, you, I know I felt a bunch of ways. It seemed to me also that you felt a bunch of ways about it while we were deciding, while you were deciding. I was trying to like mastermind the fucking universe. I was like, like, if I do this, then maybe it'll mean this thing. And if I do that, maybe it'll mean that thing. And like, all that I'm seeking counsel from this person and that Uh person. And like, it was really helpful to talk to other people about it. Like 
But at the end of the day, the biggest feedback that I feel like I got from talking to other people was, it really doesn't matter what you decide to do. Dang, kind <laughs> like, of, huh? It was literally just like, you could do that. Or, you know, here's another option. You could do that. Totally. Or you could do that. Like, that, like life every day is a winding road. It really doesn't matter. You get a little bit closer to feeling fine. And I did. I think, yeah, it's like time and like just doing you like staying true to yourself it's like it doesn't matter what you pick whatever you need whatever you choose is what it now is you know right but like people offering that counsel are like being there for you you know they're like hearing you and that's really what one needs to be able to make a decision because we're all making the decision ourselves Mm. regardless and that's what's so fucked up is that like i find myself often making the decision to not make a decision so that somebody else can make a decision. Oh, interesting. But that's still a Very decision. Interesting. It's yes, not, it not a decision. Yeah, <laughs> you literally. Know? So I feel like the offering that people are giving is not like, this is what you should do as much as like, wow, sounds, sounds like you got some stuff to do. Yeah. It literally <laughs> sounds like a situation. Yeah. Sounds like something to do. Yeah. And you're like, it is. Thank you so much for hearing me. <laughs> literally. It is a situation. You're right. That's exactly what I guess. <laughs> That's literally thank you. Yeah. yeah. What are you calling in this week? Mm. I'm calling in ritual mm. this week. Mm-hmm. I think I feel, I, I think I feel, I have definitely been lacking ritual. And part of it is like driving wonky ass week from North Carolina with a trailer and a chihuahua. And it's just like, what is ritual in that moment? But you have to find it. And I didn't like smoke weed regularly because I was just like trying to sleep as little as possible so I could just get here. But it's like the universe and your body and everything like that will offer you what you need because that's how it goes. (laughs) I don't know how else to say it. And so then there would be these um, sunrises that were that started started to feel like a ritual and sometimes I would capture it and sometimes I would just be like out there peeing or trying to get on to the next thing and just be like completely stopped by it I had to pull over a few times because the sunrise was just too amazing like <laughs> I, god forbid I find myself in a position of not being able to stop for the sunrise mm. that's not what I want <laughs> That's when I know I'll not, I won't be on time is what I like to think about being on time, not being on time. Mm. I don't have anxiety about that. So it's easy to play with for me, Mm. but I'm just like, dang, right on time. Look at that sunrise, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that became a ritual that I couldn't have prepared. You know, I'm not like, you know, what I really want to do is catch us. It's just like, if you're up Mm. and nobody's talking to you and you don't have anything else to do Mm. and it's just there. Mm. So this morning I was showering and the sun was coming up the window and I like to open the window when I shower so the steam can go out and so some of the cold air can come in because I, I like that it's always cold in the morning here <clears throat> and I just watch the sun come up over the hills by our house so I'm calling in ritual <laughs> mm-hmm. what are you calling in baby I love that I love all that about the sunset the sunrise and sunsets it it bears witness like or like it begs to be witnessed doesn't even it doesn't beg it it commands witness totally it's really such a great example of how to be but i mean it's the sun anyway um what am i calling in i'm calling in uh the change up Mm. my numerology was saying that it's okay for me to like shift my rituals Mm. right now and it was like not because there's anything not rituals i'm saying that because you just said rituals. i was like harmony (laughs) total copycat brain um no it said that but it was talking about like routines that's the Mm, word i mean um it was like switch up like don't be afraid to change up your routines and i'm like a very routine based person and i get very upset when my routines are uh bungled or like when they don't go the way that i think they're gonna go and it happens all the time because it's also simultaneously really hard for me to keep a pattern so like Mm -hmm. i don't understand how these two things go together it's the cancer and the virgo coming together but like i want for my routines to like be a certain way and be like working toward them and every week there's some shit that happens where it's like oh that's not how i thought it was supposed to be and the numerology this week is like it's okay for it to not be uh, it's okay to do it different, not because there's anything wrong with the way that you're doing it, 
but just because it's good to do something new sometimes. And like that is definitely feels like a recurring theme for me right now mm. that like it's okay to do something new or it's okay to just like it's okay for it to feel different mm -hmm. and just like try something new mm -hmm. yeah. so um, yeah i'm inviting that in that's why i fuck with you because i feel like you're willing to go there you know what i mean mm. like really take take a question and expand it real big and i love that it makes my life more interesting. <laughs> was that expanding the question? Though? Well, you could be like, sometimes we say patience. Oh, well, Joy. I was going to say patience before you said what you were saying. And then I thought of a new answer <laughs> because I'm always inviting impatience. Yeah. And um, I definitely feel like I was inviting impatience this morning. But that's just <laughs> I, more, oh, yeah. even more than that is this the change of it. Yeah. I love so, that. Yeah. Isn't that Thanks, a Kehlani man. album? Album? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't work. know that I've ever had. I feel ice like cream I've never McDonald's gotten ice cream. Yeah, totally. I feel like the ice cream machine is just down Full at time. every McDonald's in Durham. But you put it on the internet. You're like, "What's good with that?" And people were like, "There's no, a there's whole movement like a, of human beings who are like, yeah." There's a whole reason behind it too, because it's complicated to clean. Yeah, it's complicated to clean, and there's only like one person on staff who can do it, and there's some kind of rule about it. I feel like about they might never be going revamping that that <laughs> system though, because I feel like the last few times I've been to McDonald's to ask for ice cream they've had ice cream but this is also when we were traveling through new england where there are <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm saying so i'm saying i was so at a wendy's right now. i was at a wendy's um i wish i knew where i was somewhere in the heartland and there were everybody that was working at that wendy's was a 21 year old white man mm -hmm. with a white ball cap on mm. and they in earnest used the word bruh oh, yeah. to refer to one another Bru i didn't see a grown-up in the place mm. i was like i was it was this i had never i don't think I've, it's like they went to the frat house and said this is what we're gonna do is it summer is it a summer job maybe it's summer now yeah mm. and they're just like cool we'll just all we we never have to be apart. We're all best friends. They looked like they were. They looked like they could be like a set of qu like uh, quintuplets. Mm -hmm. They were just like very similar human beings. <clears throat> and I've never seen anything like it. And mm. I think it just really caught my eye. And I'm not, I don't photograph people without their permission or any of that. So I didn't do any of that. But boy, I was taken by it. Uh, children of the corn. So I don't know what was happening. Something mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I was like, wow. Wow. And they could have been related very much. They were all the same though. I've just, that's the thing is I think that's the thing. I've never, <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen everybody looking the same at work like that. Mm. But I would say six to eight, six to nine people. I'm looking around the kitchen, you know, how at a Wendy's or because I have the trailer, I can go through drive through Anyway, that was something I noticed. Maybe this gets, gets cut too. I'm not totally sure, but <laughs> I did mean to tell you that <laughs> story. Wait, this happened recently? Yo, it was on this trip that I was oh, just on. I thought you were saying something that happened a long time no, ago. Just now. And, I, was like, and I, I just feel like it was that day we, we weren't talking so much or something. But I no, was just totally. like, You're talking wow. I completely forgot. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? What are you saying, Nothing. my love? Nothing. Do you want to do you wanna do something on your heart? No. Nope. Okay. Um, my favorite thing happened every so every time I would stop, which was a lot on this on this trip last week. I would like TikTok real hard at the gas station, you know, mm. or while Baby Shark was peeing or playing at Love's um, pet um, park, pet, dog park, dog park, pet, pet park. Yeah. What so, other pets do you think somebody would bring to a bunny? <gasps> Absolutely. Bunny okay, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get off. Please. If you have a ferret, maybe you. I don't know. You probably wouldn't let a ferret out in the pet park, but I don't know if you have a turtle. I don't know. I don't know what your yeah, trip totally. is like. I don't no, know who's this in is your a family. Very good point. Um, Chinchilla. But Sonia, one of the things that I one of the things that I love about TikTok is when somebody does something real catchy, and you oh, simply yeah. can't get it out of your head. Mm -hmm. So it was like part of the drive that I was just like in the desert, and it was just like looking the same for a long time, and I was just like, you know, kind of bored is not the right word. It's like understimulated, maybe, you know. Mm -hmm. And like I didn't want to listen to a book. I didn't want to, you know, I couldn't just decide on music. But this freaking TikTok was just stuck in my head, and I was just singing it over and over and over for the like. 150 miles or something until I stopped again. And it was amazing. So um, it was a duet. Somebody um, was playing music and a real catchy riff, just 
good stuff. I mean, there's keyboards, there's ba a lot of bass line, electric bass. And then this other person duetted with that person and sang this, like the song on top of the music. <laughs> Y'all know what this shit is. Anyway. Um, it's a song duet. It's a song duet. And the person who did the words, their handle is, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Y-G-E-G-O-R-F, like Yagigorf. Anyway, I hope that's not wrong. <laughs> it's probably is. And there's talk of a platypus controlling them. And, and it's just you, really... You were so tickled by it. Don't stop. I can't stop. I got a platypus controlling me. What? Got a platypus controlling me. Now let me sum it up. It was a strange set of circumstances. Strange set of circumstances. Strange set of circumstances. Fell down this hill. Now I got glue on my hands. And under records on my fingers. And I just can't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Well, I would if I was able. There's a platypus controlling me. He's underneath the table. There's a platypus controlling him. What? Oh my gosh. Well, it really <clears throat> kept me company for a while. Yeah. So I think I just ha formed an emotional bond. But anyway, it's so good. It's also very, very good. So there's that. Anyway, that was my favorite thing this week. You want to give the answer to last week's trivia question? Sure. I also love this segment. Okay. Last week's trivia question was, what organization did the activist scholar theologian Polly Murray help found? And part of this is that Polly Murray's from Durham mm -hmm. and quite an inspo. Mm-hmm just life inspo but part of it too is that my friend barbara lau started the Polly murray project which is a, an organization founded in Polly murray's honor so i've interned there for almost a year so i know a little bit but i i also just love that i got to look it back up so i could make sure i got it right so the answer <laughs> is i said two or more answers include the congress on racial equality uh with and this is what i wrote <laughs> The Congress on Racial Equality with fellow black homo world leader and game changer Bayard Rustin, where she later explained to Martin Luther King and others how wrongheaded it was to continue to dwarf the leadership of she and other women femmes and AFABs fighting for racial equity. Uh, and the National Organization for Women with Betty Friedan, from which she dipped when the elite white feminism started choking her spirit out. Notably here, Polly Murray coined the term Jane Crow, referring to the specific conditions that black women face under both a misogynistic white supremacy and an anti-black patriarchy. So anyway, she's like Durham hometown native. She was born in Baltimore, but she was raised in Durham. And her childhood house is down the street from where both of us have lived. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's that trivia. Should we move on to the Dear Query? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to read it? Yeah, I can read it. All right. My roommate and I have been living in Mexico, both from the States, since the fall. She recently entered a situationship and has been hooking up with this guy for a few months now. Now. Their PDA is 24-7 and loud. I'm waking up and falling asleep to the sounds of cheeks being clapped. One time, a group of friends came over to watch a movie and we all sat on one couch. Her and her boyfriend are making out loudly on the same couch as all of us throughout the entire movie. Another time, they were having sex loudly and the cleaning lady knocked on our front door. I told my roommate that the cleaning lady was here. She ignored me and kept loudly having sex. The cleaning lady and I had to awkwardly stand around. Several of our friends have stated that they don't want to come over anymore because of the constant uncomfortable PDA. I've spoken to my roommate a couple times about it and she apologizes and says that it is mostly her partner's fault. She will talk to him and she can tell I'm uncomfortable. Yet no behavior changes. Is this grounds for ending a friendship with her? I feel like she's walking all over me as well as being disrespectful. Whoa. I feel whoa. you, fam. That's real. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, what, what an experience. Have you ever had something like this? Um, had a roommate that, well, okay. one of, Loud sexing roommate? I don't know about loud sex, but when I was in high school, my junior year roommate. Boarding school. Yes. My roommate at boarding school, my junior year. She had a girlfriend who was around all, 100% of the time. Forever. For, ever she never was not there and i had such an issue with it but if i recall i'm sure i was being passive aggressive and not fully mm. expressing how much i did not care for it which i mean is in response to this person i'm i feel like you definitely you've already said said something to her and i feel like it's definitely grounds for like 
changing the way that the friendship works for you but i do feel like there's a need to have like a very direct conversation Mm -hmm. what do you think i mean i'm not there i think this is a very important like i'm not there moment Mm because I don't know, like, if I would feel different. You know, I don't know how loud loud is. I don't know how many times you asked or how you asked. Yeah. I don't know what you and the cleaning lady talked about while <laughs> you awkwardly stood around. I'm just like, I'm going to go in and be like, okay, guys, look, cleaning <laughs> no, lady's here. You got to get the yeah, fuck out. We're not doing this. We're not playing literally. this game. And if she wants to leave. Yes. Which she might. People have left me for things like this. I but I'm like just saying, you can't. No, yeah, it's disrespectful yeah. as fuck. Like, there's a point at which you need to just fucking chill. You can just come in the room. No, and be I would like, be up in there like, no. pots and pans, like, bang, 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 bro. You need to. <laughs> if I'm like, getting is fucked that over loud? here. Does that sound loud to you? That's right. You need this, to... That's pretty loud to me. And just you know, to there's be clear. a line that gets crossed before all of this you know, um, reality TV show business starts. <clears throat> but yeah, I feel like if I've, if I. I definitely have been in, you know, many co-housing or like communal housing situations. Definitely a lot of sex that you can perceive, but like, I've never, I, I don't think it's ever been a situation I'm uncomfortable with. So like, typically if I'm living with folks who are having sex with other folks, like they're pleasant and okay, see on the way to the bedroom, like, you know, it's, it's like, I don't get involved. It's like, I know I have sex. Mm-hmm. If you can hear me, like bully for you without yeah. your vibrator yeah. you know leave me be yeah. like i'm just gonna be over here and then it's gonna be over and then I'm, it sounds like the 24 7 thing would get tricky but i would just be like we're on the couch i'd be like bruh w- stop y'all that's we're all here <laughs> what are you doing and it sounds like a case of somebody's not trying to do that well it's because you're trying to be like polite but they're not, not being polite that's no no i'm polite. saying this yeah, person yeah, yeah, is that's... like they're trying to be polite and i'm like this I'm person explaining. is not being polite i don't so like you don't need to be polite either <laughs> like they're yeah. letting you know how to communicate with yeah them. and so for me it's like and that could be low-key i mean <laughs> i'm hard-headed so like if i'm having loud sex in a way that you don't like you're gonna need to you're you gonna need, need to, to have loud it. yeah you know request <laughs> i'm having loud sex you have loud requests that's what I, w- I was saying. Like, I am usually this person who's having loud sex. Right. And I'm like, part of the issue is that you're so deep in the lust that yes. you don't know. You're like, it's, I thought it was good. Like, oh, you have a problem with this? Like a legitimate totally. issue? That's why this bitch out here blaming the partner talking about no, oh, it's mostly cool. him. How do you <laughs> say it's somebody else's fault that you're literally making out on the couch? Are you in a situation that you need help with? No, as a, honestly, this is an unsafe situation. What the <laughs> fuck? Because it seems like you're not you're giving good, consent because you seem up yeah. in it. And that, that's not, <laughs> that doesn't mean there is. Man, say something to me. I'm going to say something if you can you know what i mean like oh, reach God. out it's reach out i'm just saying thing. that's not that didn't feel cool that was like a shirking request so okay what i wrote down though was mm. there's this tricky thing about boundaries that i've learned recently and really really vibe with and if you don't we think that's great but it's the idea that like my boundary can't be hey jessamine don't say that right my boundary in that instance can really only be hey jessamine i don't want to hang out with you if you talk to me like that mm. And so if you need to keep talking about that or talking like that, I feel you, but I'm going to take some space because it's not working for me. That's a boundary. The other thing is control. And so I feel like if you want your roommate to not make you feel uncomfortable with her set, with their sex, I don't know, because her, I think you did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her and her boyfriend. Yeah. Then you need to figure out a way to actually make a boundary and not try to control her. So if a boundary is like, y'all can be loud fucking between this hour and that hour, or like, I'm always at the grocery store on this, whatever the boundary is, you can say like where you're going to be and offer that spaciousness because you don't want to be around the fucking. But if they can't respect that, if there's like, y'all can't come to some agreement about that, then, you know, you got to figure out how to take your space. Yeah, absolutely. And if that means you move out, yeah, then you move out. Yeah. If that means you and everybody else moves out, y'all move out. But like... I don't think it's ethical to be like, I don't like the way you behave in your house. You have to Mm -hmm. move out. I don't know what the least circumstances is, all that. You know what I'm saying? But it's not for me. If I don't like what you're doing, Justin, asleep, I'm going to find another bed. I need to. Yeah, totally. I'm not Mm -hmm. telling you to get out of your bed. Yeah. That's not a boundary. That's control. Yeah. So that bears out when when you and I try to take space, for instance, in sleeping. Is I think you feel that way too. I mean, I see I you also that do way. that where you're not yeah. ever kicking me out, but if yeah. you need space, you gotta you gotta go. And I think this is a classic case of like yeah. feeling 
your agency fully mm-hmm. is not telling other people what to do. Yeah. Feeling your agency fully is knowing that you're empowered to make decisions for yourself. Mm-hmm. So that's, I mean, I don't really have much else to say about it, I think. Not that you shouldn't. Yeah. But. No, I mean, like, I do think that there's something to really telling your friend, like, you know, it upsets me when you do that's this right. or like, because th- she really might not know. And like, the best thing, like, as a friend, like, that's the kind of, that's the reason that we're all friends with each other is to like, give each other honest feedback. So I feel like that's really helpful. But I feel like if you've given feedback and this person is like, not, they're still living their life the way they're living it, which yeah is i agree with you that it's like that's how she and her boyfriend fuck like that's how they fuck and like they don't need to change that for anybody else but like if it's not for you please my god like do something that does is for you because like this life is too short to be out here like mad at your roommate and it's like harvesting bad energy in your body and then you're like holding a grudge against her because y'all could probably be friends and not be roommates roommates is different from friends like maybe y'all just don't need to be roommates some people have loud sex some people don't like it sometimes you don't um yeah yeah totally but i feel i mean this has to be i guess the other one thing i want to say is Mm -hmm. because i said i didn't have anything else to say um, is that this is such an opportunity to have this experience mm. to like figure out what you're comfortable with asking for in terms of your boundaries, in terms of like what you need, what you, what part of you, cause we all do this. What part of you is slut shaming? Mm. What part of you is like mad that you don't have a boyfriend who wants to fuck you in front of Ooh, everybody? Oh my God. And not in shade. <laughs> I'm so and this sorry. Is shade. This is, yeah. I just didn't. Yeah. Totally. Like are there percentages oh. of you? Are there parts in, of you? who want to jump in or oh, what part of you wants to make it a threesome you know what i'm saying oh, totally. and i'm not saying you do i'm just saying if there are parts of you that aren't just like totally inconvenienced by this mm. that like feel other feelings like you can acknowledge those too you don't have to tell nobody but you can sit with those and be like oh okay cool and just see if it feels different after that who knows maybe it doesn't you know but just being like dang Maybe you need to get on Tinder or like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, but maybe that kind of reflection will help mm, see the path forward or something a little bit. It's just like sit with what you got going on for you. I also feel like sometimes you just don't want that vibe around. That's like you just don't want right. somebody else's energy in your space for literally any reason. Just right. cause <laughs> be like, I don't prefer that. Like, I don't like what you're doing. It's not, it does not work for me. And just expressing that fully, I think it's totally. helpful. Um, did you want to talk about that that question that we got? Sure. Or that uh, it wasn't a question; it was yeah. a, some feedback that we received. So we got some feedback that I just, you know, I've had a couple different conversations with Justin about um, this email that we received from a listener that I just I feel first and foremost really grateful for. Anytime y'all engage anytime the show makes you want to say anything to anybody especially if i get the benefit of like it being me that you want to say stuff to so we got this um email about episode 312 that we did Mm -hmm. a few weeks ago and the email is specifically talking about when jessamine and i are discussing capitalism and i remember when we were talking about it on the show you know you have a public life and a private life (laughs) And I feel like the expansiveness and the safety with which you you and I, Jessamine, talk about, um, you know, all the different things we believe that may or may not be popular opinions, may or may not be the party line, that when we were talking about capitalism, I feel like we got up close to something that feels like protective or like mm-hmm. I feel protective of, which is the way that we are, are you know, keep it real about economic systems and... Mm-hmm. I know that I was raised by and trained by politically people who are very anti-capitalist. And I identify as an anti-capitalist because of all the ways that capitalism is ravishing, oh. ravaging, 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 mm-hmm. totally ravishing is different, ravaging communities that I care about, including a bunch of communities that I am, that I intersect with. And I also believe so strongly in the freedom that all of us I would love all of us to have the agency to live into, which is to have your own opinion, Mm -hmm. to believe your own thing, to take your lived experience and do your best every day. And I don't get to tell you what that is. And I don't get to tell you what it's called. And I don't get to tell you how to name it. And I don't get to tell you where it came from. 
And I'm trying to focus on me and worry about myself and read the books that help me make sense of things and see the forests that help me make sense of things and walk the walks that help me make sense of things and not tell other people how to make sense of things. And I know that I've lived almost all of my life in this body with a lot of passion and desire for what I believe to be good things for everybody. But I can't decide for other people what that is. And so when you and I talk about the ways we differ politically, it matters so much to me. <laughs> it like is so important to me. And I never thought that before. When, when I was in my 20s, I was like, don't disagree with me mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. or else we can't Literally. be close. Absolutely. And it's felt like such a shift for me in expansiveness and freedom in my spirit mm. to be able to love so deeply somebody who disagrees on one of the most fundamental political beliefs mm -hmm. I have. Honestly, it feels like I am capable of holding space that I couldn't hold. I could not hold it before. And that doesn't mean other people should feel that way about themselves. Mm. Talk about my journey mm. and how alienating I have been and how many, love I, how many loves I have lost by deciding I was right and knowing better than them for their life. Mm. And not being shackled by that in this relationship feels really good to me. And if it means that like you and I differ on the way we call our political economic belief systems, mm -hmm. I know you're a good person with a good heart <laughs> and that's who I want to be around. Not somebody who can say it the way I say it or fe f feel like, you know, they want to tell me I'm right about everything. I want to be with somebody who makes my heart sing and that's you. And it feels hard for political beliefs or, or e any beliefs to be reduced to, um, I don't know. I would say that is your feeling like, Okay, just to give a little bit more backstory, we got an email from one of y'all that was expressing distaste for the way we were talking about, and maybe I will own the way that I was talking about uh, capitalism. And they're feeling that capitalism is reprehensible in all cases and that it has done immeasurable damage to our society, particularly to Black communities and to Black people. And that um, that it's important for us to be mindful of that and that, um, you know, it's short sighted to see capitalism as something that could be reformed or evolved. And that's something that I am just so glad that whoever you are, <laughs> that you wrote in and said this, because we say at the top of the show we we may say shit that you don't like and we think and you may disagree and we think that's great and i appreciate you like expressing this opinion that i think a lot of people have and mm -hmm. it seems like you have this opinion also mm -hmm. and you expressed that at the time i don't really know how much more i have to say about it beyond that because i think that we're all having different experiences yeah but what you were just saying felt like you were like <laughs> Um, embarrassed by this whole line of uh, thought. And that, yeah, I mean, embarrassed yeah. is an interesting way. Ashamed for sure that I didn't yeah. do a better job of like speaking to this at the time because I remember finding myself in fear mm. in that moment and being sort of shut down by it because I knew this was coming mm. where like, I mean, thoughts and words are very powerful mm. and being impeccable with my word is really important to me. And I don't like being misunderstood on some shit that I feel like I could have done much better. Mm -hmm. So embarrassed as in like, yeah, I don't, I don't like when I leave vague mm -hmm. what my values are. Cause I'm very strong. It's not, I work hard to like, I do a lot of reflection. I'm like, you know, I, I do a lot of study and inquiry and, and it, it's important to me to then just be like, but it wasn't important enough for me to say it correctly. Mm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. oh, that's a bummer. Why did, why did I pick that <laughs> time to, you know, choose fear over like what mm. I know to be true about myself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm embarrassed. Damn, damn. That is, oh, that is so real. Yeah. That is so real. And that's why I, I don't believe in cancel shit. culture. <laughs> oh yeah. Cause oh. I'm just like, I mm -hmm. wish that we could all just like come to the table as we are and be accepted. And if you, and if folks really don't, if folks are like, bro, I feel like you're shutting your freedom down by believing that. Let me tell you what mm -hmm. I'm, what, what I mean. Cause we love each other already. Mm -hmm. I just, I know that that's not possible. I know that I'm like overlooking like really intense shit that happens that I just don't think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And and I can stand in that. I don't think it's necessary to fight each other. Yes. Because we disagree. Yeah. 
And I don't want to fight anybody, Mm -hmm. especially because we disagree, you know, Mm -hmm. like I'll fight you if you take my food. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) But not on some like shit we can't prove, not on some like everybody has different trauma that's coming into every decision they're making. And now I know better than you about how you should live your life. That's not for me. Yeah. I don't dig it. Yeah. That's how I feel. And I also think that we all want the same thing. We're just going about it in different ways. And we all want to be well. We all want our communities to be well. We want the people that we love to have what they need. We want to have what we need individually. And I think that if we can come from a place of understanding that, then there's only respect for the way that each person is going about it. And maybe the need to look at each person's perspective a little bit more thoroughly. And I think that I always have room to do that. And yeah. Yeah. But um, thanks for saying something. I always appreciate the opportunity to reflect. <clears throat> and you know, yeah, I live in gratitude. I mean, I am. I'm yeah. grateful. I have nothing but gratitude for this. Yeah. I don't disagree with this person on any level. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I'm like, are you... <laughs> well, we don't need to talk about it. Tell me. No, I just feel like you... We've had some very interesting conversations with each other because mm-hmm. of this uh, question, this, uh, not a question, this feedback. feedback. And it's definitely made me see the ways that you're like ashamed to be involved with a capitalist. Ooh, uh, <laughs> and, not true. Well, that's what it feels like. Or at a minimum, it feels like, I mean, we've talked about how I can feel sometimes about like, being with a white person it's like it's a thing so like it feels like a piece of that and what i didn't say on that show more in depth is that like i really want (laughs) to i really want to just like add nuance to your capitalist identity and Mm -hmm. maybe i shouldn't it's not my business you add your own nuance but like i just being in your the relationship with you and and being an anti-capitalist and really studying what capitalism is and like having a good sense of what yeah, yeah, like what I know it to be in my lived experience, you know, so much you can't really get away from it. Everybody really mm-hmm. knows it on some level. Mm-hmm. And I and I and I've taken it a step further trying to like really study what, what some folks are saying about it. And and I just don't think that what you practice is what we got feedback about, in fact. And no, I just don't absolutely. think that, I think that word tri- yeah, is triggering. It is absolutely it's a triggering word. I so appreciated earlier today you said uh something about anarchy. I I felt like you were calling me an anarchist and I felt really seen in that. And I appreciate that because that is more than any other thing. I definitely identify as an anarchist. And I feel like for me that come, it's, it's a very big concept. And I'm like, there's a lot of different ways to make the changes to, to bring about shift Mm. to, to transform. And I think that, the way that we as human beings work, we tend to center around either God or money, mm-hmm. AKA money being treated as God. That's right. And God is such a vague and subjective concept and it feels extremely unsafe to build government systems upon, in my opinion, mm-hmm. like the countries that have done it. Cause it's interpretive. It's interpretive and it's not fair to everybody. Look at any country that is run by religion. Like totally. it's problematic, including this one. And so That's I'm true. like, if we can all get on the same page about money in a way where everyone has access to it. So that would be the change. That would yeah. be the thing that I know you to be very different than a nor- than like your Elon Musk's and your yeah. and your uh, what's his name went to space? Of course, Elon. And Jeff I have the same birthday. Though. Jeff Bezos. Like the day well, the it's like birthday. I think it's like so shadows. Many. I think it's like two sides of a coin. Maybe on that. I don't birthday. know if it's same if it's a different coin. Oh no, is that? Right, I just right. <laughs> my thing is like I just I don't even know that it can be reformed. Mm. Like I don't I don't know that I think it could actually be reformed, but. I know that we're all working in this system and that I think that there are ways that we can work together so that we all have access to the resources that we need. Totally. <clears throat> that's what I meant. And I don't know if that's still, this person is like, fuck you. You're not like, you are against us, not with us. Like, 
I think there's an issue too of to like you. language. And, so, and I really just can't get past it because I just feel like the way that you work, like I work with you, like I know how you work. I know how you treat employees. Like having a non-hierarchical structure of, of work. I just don't, I just don't think that you, I just don't think it's the same. I don't know. Other people don't need to agree, I don't but they I don't have, I, I think that your capitalism looks really different than what that word often elicits for folks. I don't, I don't know about Doesn't any of that. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I'm not working from anything but a white man's model, you know, and I'm trying to do something different, but I don't know if it's actually different. And like, it could all just be in going toward the same end. But, but if it is, I guess I want folks to reflect on how they also participate in these systems right. that feel so important to tell other people they're doing a bad job of. You know, I think we're all in the midst of trying to figure out how to do this as ethically as we can learn about while living it, mm -hmm. while living in it. You know, there's no scot-free from this, as far as I know. I think critique is important. Absolutely. I, th I feel like it's really important to be critical of capitalism. I think anti-capitalism is extremely important. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I feel like that was not my most succinct moment. But I mean, sometimes life isn't succinct. Do you want to talk Astro Thought of the Week? <laughs> or I did want to say uh, thank you all so much for writing into the show. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I don't want to speak for you, but it means a lot oh to me. Oh my gosh, it means the most to me. a lot to you. What's that? No, I was like, does it mean a lot to you? It means everything to me. Yeah. Um, if you want to send in a Deary query, you can head to our website, dearjessamine.com. There is a email box on the website where you can send in your feedback. Or queries. Or queries. Um, ask your thought of the week. I can't, you know, I didn't know. I don't have, you go. What do you think? <laughs> Astro thought of the week uh, is that Mercury is retrograde. That's my oh, Astro yesterday. thought of the week. Yeah, but it's been in the pre-retrograde shadow for a couple weeks. And the retrograde is obvious, I think, even in this episode. So <laughs> 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 there's that. Mercury being the planet of communication and technology and language <laughs> um it's also in gemini so it's all bubbly and shit and i said and thank god it's jupiter and aries we're going into or we just as of yesterday jupiter went into aries which it will be for much of the next year and what is jupiter control i cannot even remember that's what's so annoying i know it's one of the social planets says costar i'm looking it up jupiter and Saturn are these social planets but I just um, Jupiter one of the two social planets Jupiter rules idealism optimism and expansion in Aries whoa yeah so That's powerful sounding. it's fast it's courageous it's innovative as Chani would say is that what Chani says about innovative? Aries no innovative? just the that's how she pronounces that the word. is how she pronounces <laughs> innovative yeah I never heard it pronounced that way so, and I like it it Me is the too. Chani pronunciation. Hey, mate. Hey. Do you want to read the trivia question? Sure. The trivia question for this week is, what is the name of the HBO show about lesbian landowner and industrialist Anne Lister? Mm -hmm. Well, I reckon that's, I reckon that's Dear Jessamine. Is it? Yeah. All right. Do you want to get out of here? Yes. Roll in credit. Dear Jessamine is produced by Tenderfire Media. For more on our show, follow us on Spotify and Instagram at Dear Jessamine, or head over to our website, dearjessamine.com. If you're an Apple podcast person, you can subscribe to our show. And while you're there, write us a review. They really help us out a lot. And they give you a place to let folks know how you feel about our show. Here's our team. Kylie C. Roberts is our editor slash producer. Angel Foster and Naya Williams do our social media. Jamie Leppard draws our art, and Fruit Snack plays our theme song. Montez Mickles is our director of production. Anna Rooney is my chief of staff. Amber Richardson is Ash's chief of staff. Ash Danger Phoenix is my co-host and co-producer. And I am Jessamine Stanley. 
and we believe that no one should be in jail for weed. Tender fire. Drop page. <laughs>